Hey, Elevate Life, how you doing? I want to welcome all of our locations. What an honor and a privilege it is to uh, spend some time going through the Word of God. How many of you love your pastors here at Elevate Life? Oh, at every location, put your hands together for Pastor Tim and Crystal. Oh, we love them. You know, it's, it's one thing to serve uh, a church. It's something completely different to serve and build the kingdom of God. And they are kingdom people. And we don't take it for granted. Me, my wife, Jan, Celebration Church, that we are locked arm in arm uh, with your incredible leaders and this incredible church family. So thank you for serving the way that you do. Thank you for giving the kingdom of God your yes. And I'm just glad to have another good-looking brother in Jacksonville <laughs> to run alongside with that we can push back the veil of darkness and uphold the veil of righteousness. Amen. And so I'm going to hop right into the series that we've been in entitled Summer School. And I'm excited to get to you the word that God has given me for our time together. And so what I want to do, uh, I want us to read from Psalms chapter 42, verse 11, and then I'll give us the topic of discussion, and then we'll unpack that. Is that okay? All right, so this is what we're going to do. When you get to Psalms 42, say, I got it. You're not there yet. There ain't no way you're there yet because I just gave it to you. <laughs> So let's go to Psalms 42. If you don't got your Bible, it's okay. The team's going to throw it on the screen. I like for us to read together. It ensures that you don't start off the message sleep and you are awake. Amen. Psalms 42 verse 11 says, Why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God. For I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. Why are you so downcast, O oh my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. For a moment, I want to talk to you from the subject matter of night school. Night school. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our time together. We ask, God, that you would seal in us this word that you are delivering to us. Transform us, change us, renew our minds, and may our lives never be the same. It is in your name that we pray, the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, and all of you that are thankful for his name, can we shout amen? Amen. amen. How many of you are familiar with night school, familiar with night school? Some of you may be going into a semester of a night school right now. Now, night school is kind of interesting because it's more for uh, uh, people who are multitasking multiple things in life. I had to go to night school uh, when I was in college, not because I was multitasking a bunch of different things, uh, but simply uh, because I was put on something called academic probation. How many ever heard of that before? Uh, you know, education was not my strong suit in college. You know, community was, fellowship was, activities was, but like going to class, that just was not my thing. And so as an athlete, I, I got placed on something called academic probation. And simply put, they told me, they said, Tim, you don't even have to think about playing if you don't come off academic probation. You got to get your grades up above this GPA so that we can reactivate you and you can become a vital part of this program uh, that you actually came to college to play for. And so uh, what I had to do, I had to go to school at nighttime. Now, let me tell you something about night school. You, you won't find uh, classrooms packed out at nighttime. It just won't happen. You, you won't even find a lunch break happening at nighttime. You, you, you don't want to be uh, the person that's the only student going to class at night. In this particular season, I was the only student at this university going to school at night for the courses that I had to go and raise my GPA in. And so some things that I learned in night school that I could not have learned in any other setting in my life was that when I pay close attention and I take my time, 
Although in moments of pain, moments of difficulty, even moments of embarrassment, because it is embarrassing when everyone else is going to uh, dinner in the calf, you're going to class, that God can do something unique and special through night school. So some of us are in night school right now. Not, not in the sense that we are going to class and we're learning uh, education and we're going for math, but some of us are in night school because we're multitasking multiple things that may be heavy in this present season of life. Some of you are in night school in depression. Some of you in, are in night school in the most stressful season of your life. Some of you are in night school in the financial crunch of what you are stewarding in this present season of your life. And the only thing that I want to do right now is allow you to know through the word of God that although we may be in a season of night school, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Anybody grateful for that? But how many of you know before morning comes, there are some things that we can learn from the night schools? I'm a firm believer that any test that we take is only supposed to be given to us once, but we will take that test over and over and over again if we continue to fail the same test. How many of you ever had one of those teachers that just liked you and, and you failed the test and they said, listen, 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 come over here, come, come, come with me. I'm going to give you some bonus points. If you just take this test and you correct the answers, I can't give you everything right, but I'm going to help you with what we call a curve. How many of you can ever use a curve in life? God says, not only am I going to give you a curve, but I'm going to give you a correction. If you just spend time with him, if you just lean into his word, if you just hear his voice, he says, I'm going to right all things wrong. I'm going to make all things new, and I'm going to help you out on this journey so that you won't have to spend the rest of your life in night school. There's a passage of scripture that I want us to look at found in 1 Kings chapter 19. One of my favorite people in the word of God, Elijah, he's in a season of night school in this particular text. And, and I want us to uplift this text to see exactly what happened and then learn from it so that we that are in night school can navigate this night school, walking hand in hand with Jesus, understanding what he told us. And what he told us is, I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. I'll be with you until the very end of all time. And thank God he doesn't leave us in the night season. Seasons. He, he's with us consistently. And, and I love the saying, if God be for us, who or what can stand against us? And so 1 Kings chapter 19, beginning at verse number one, it says, now Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with his sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say, may the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow, I do not make your life like the one of them that you killed. And Elijah was afraid. He ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there while he himself went the day's journey into the wilderness. He came to a broom bush, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. I've had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life, for it is no better than my ancestors. And some of you may be in a season of confusion, a season of chaos, a season of pain, a season of tension, a season of pressure, a season of sickness, a season of sorrow, a season of depression, a season of stress. And I just need you to hear me tell you that when you find yourselves in these classrooms of night school, God is still with you. Amen. It does not mean that your faith is less than anyone else's. It does not mean that you are broken. It does not mean that something is wrong with you. It means that life has begun to life. And you need a savior to help you on this journey so that you don't think that you can navigate these seasons by yourself. 
How do we get placed in night school? I'm so glad you asked. (laughs) Oftentimes we get placed in night school because of faulty thinking. Faulty thinking will always lead us away from the purpose, the plan, the will, the desires of God, and always draw us to the purpose, the plan, the will, and the desires that we have for our own self. You know, there's this common language that's being thrown around right now in society and culture. It's become very popular, and that language is speak your own truth. Listen, y'all, I'm tired of hearing y'all truth. It's not about our truth. It's about his truth. Because scripture says, when it's his truth, it's the truth, and the truth will set you free. (laughs) Faulty thinking is when we get in the habit of rehearsing what is negative. We have a rehearsal for what is going wrong in our life and we find ourselves having conversations with what did not happen and what was supposed to happen and and how disappointed we are and all these different things and we find ourselves in the various seasons of going back over those things that are negative when we should in fact place our trust in the fact that as long as we are still alive and as long as we still have breath in our lungs then God is still capable and able to do exceeding and abundantly and above all that we could ask or think. And I just wonder, is there anybody listening to me right now that still believes that God is able? Sometimes we place ourselves behind the desk in night school because of faulty thinking. Listen to me, family. Your emotions, they will lie to you. If you are led by your emotions, your emotions will eventually lead you in the direction of what you desire. And oftentimes what I found about my own life is what I desire is not necessarily what God desires for me. And so I can't be led by my emotions. I desperately need to be led by the Spirit of God. And when I'm led by the Spirit of God, guess what happens? My destiny moves towards me at the speed of my obedience. But when I allow faulty thinking to set in, it places me behind the desk of night school. Another thing that has positioned me, and maybe it's positioned you in night school, is isolation. Feeling isolated, isolating yourself from community, isolating yourself from your loved ones, isolating yourself from from the people that really love and value you. And so often when we find ourselves in moments and and seasons of pain, the only thing that we want to do is just spend time by ourselves. And it's nothing wrong with spending time by yourself, but there's a difference between spending time by yourself and isolating yourself and providing a buffer between you and the people that love you, whenever you find yourself isolated, you have now entered into a danger zone. And you desperately need to surround yourself back in community. That's why church is so important. That's why this church is so important because it's providing a solution to a problem for us that may be trapped in isolation. That's why scripture teaches us, don't don't forsake the accompaniment of your brother's and your sisters, because there's something dangerous about isolation. You ever felt lonely before? Am I the only one? Okay, okay. (laughs) But sometimes you can be surrounded by people and still feel lonely. You know what I've come to learn? Sometimes when you find yourself in those seasons, it's not that you don't have people is that you ask yourself the question, who has me? I need you to hear me tell you this. God has you. He's near to you even when you find yourself in the night seasons of life. He's near to you when you are stressed out of your mind, when you don't know which way is up and which way is down. He is near to you and he wants you to know that he is with you every step of the way. So anchor your hope and your trust in him. The hope that I'm referring to is not the same hope that the world talks about. The the, the hope that the world talks about implies that it may or may not happen. 
The hope that the world talks about, it, it implies that, that, it, that it may come to pass or, or it may not. No, no, the hope that I'm talking about is a biblical hope that's anchored in Jesus that allows us to know that if he said it, we can bank on it. If God says something to us, if God has made you a promise, if God has made you a declaration, if God has given you a word, we can seek our hope in his word because it always comes to pass. So don't isolate yourself. Hear me, community is not a luxury. Community is a necessity. It's not something that we get an opportunity to pick and decide and choose if we want to be a part. No, no, we desperately need community. Amen. The word of God teaches us that we overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the words of our testimony. Your testimony is helping someone else in the community overcome the night school that they may find themselves in. And when they see you and they see you still faithful to the things that God has called you to be faithful over, it gives them the energy and a fresh battery in their back to know if they can make it, so can I. Don't isolate yourself. Community is so vital to everything that God has you doing. You may run faster alone, but I promise you, you will run longer together. Ecclesiastes chapter four, verse 11, it says, likewise, two people lying close together can keep each other warm. But how can one be warm alone? A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer anything. Together, you can conquer anything. But when we isolate ourselves, there are very few things that we can actually conquer. I've also found that when I find myself in the night seasons or night school of life, it's because I'm being led by my feelings. I feel like doing this, so I don't feel like doing that. I feel like going to church today. I don't feel like going to church today. I feel like doing these things. I don't feel, and I find myself in night school when I'm being led by my feelings. And here's my question for us right now in this moment. Are we in the seasons that we're in because God led us there? Or are we in the seasons that we are in because our feelings led us to this place? How many times have you been disappointed in your own decisions? All the time. All the time. All, I, let's just be honest for a moment. How many promises have you made to yourself that you've broken? So if you can't keep a promise to yourself, how can you be led by yourself? You, you have to be led by someone that can make greater and better decisions than you can make because you can't lead yourself. You need to be led by the Spirit of God. And I love what John chapter 8 verse 32 says. I quoted it before, but I want to read it to you. It says, and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Guess what your feelings will do? Your feelings will entangle you. And some may ask the question, well, pastor, isn't this how God made me? Didn't God give me feelings? Didn't God give me emotions? And the answer is yes, you were born with those emotions, you were born with those feelings. But when you are born again, you're no longer led by them. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The next thing that I found that has led me into night school is comparison. Whenever I compare my life to the life of other people, I find myself not liking the season of life that I'm in when in fact the season of life that I'm in is the very season that I prayed for five years ago. Are you in a season of denial in the very thing that you ask God for some years ago, what happened? You begin to compare your season to someone else's season. And most of the time, you don't even know that the person's life you're comparing your life to, they are also in night school. Yeah, yeah. Come on, come on. 
They're going through one of the worst seasons of their life, but they don't highlight that on social media because they don't want you to know that they are going through these difficulties. And I just wish for a moment that we, as the people of God, would stop comparing our lives to other people that we don't even know and thinking that our lives are worse than they actually are when our lives are exactly what we prayed for. When I prayed to God and asked him for patience, you know what he did? He tested me with time. When I prayed to God, make me stronger, you know what he did? He tested me with weight. When I prayed to God, allow me to love better. He surrounded me with people who meant evil. The very season that you find yourself in, quite possibly, is the same season that you asked God for some time ago. Stop comparing your life to the life of other people. It's really hard to look to the hills from which cometh your help when your eyes are constantly looking to the left and to the right. So what must we do when we find ourselves in night school. The first thing that we have to do is this. We must feed our minds with truth. How do we do that? Scripture teaches us in Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. People need more than bread for their life. They must feed on every word of God. Hear me, family, look up at me, no matter what location you're at, the only word that will work for you is the word that you work for yourself. Are you listening to me? If you don't apply the word to your life, it will not transform you. It will not change you. It's like a prescription left unopened and you will remain dealing with the ailments and the sickness that you're dealing with until you open the prescription. There's a story of a man who went to the doctor who had a cough and the doctor prescribed him some cough syrup and he took the cough syrup home, he put it in the fridge and he went back the next week and told the doctor, I still have this nasty cough. And the doctor said, did you take the medicine that I prescribed you? He said, no, I haven't taken it yet. He said, go back home, take the medicine that I prescribed you. He showed back up at the doctor's office the next week and said, doctor, I still got this nasty cough. And the doctor said, did you take the medicine I prescribed you? And he said, no, I haven't taken it yet. He said, go back home, take the medicine I prescribed you. Three weeks in a row, he showed up at the doctor's office and the doctor saw him waiting in a lobby and said, go back home, take the medicine that I prescribed you. And as crazy as that sounds, as funny as that is, we are the same way in the spirit when we ask God to do things for us that he's already given us a prescription for in his word. And all we have to do is open his word up and read his word and apply his word and pray through his word and see our lives change and transform by the renewing of our mind because now we have applied truth to it. So when should I feed my mind? God's truth? The answer is all the time. Psalms chapter 119, verse 147, the New Living Translation, it says, I rise early to cry out for help and to put my hope in your words. Psalms 119, verse 97 says, Lord, how I love your word. It's hard not to spend time with someone that you love. And what I found is the reason we don't spend time in the word of God is because we don't love the word of God. It's like saying you love someone, but you don't love their voice. It's like saying you, you love me, but you don't love my wife. It's not gonna happen. We can't be friends. You have to love the word of God. It says in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. What I've come to learn is so often we settle for just reading scripture without learning from the word. 
because there's a difference. If I settle for scripture, guess what happens? I'm limited to my perspective. If I dig into the word, I get God's perspective. Why? Because he is the word. Scripture gives me knowledge. His word gives me revelation. Amen. When I read his word, it allows me to know him in a very personal way. If I just want to seek out information and read scripture for my own pride and ego, then it allows me to know about God. And I can say I know about a lot of people, but not actually know them. I can say I know about Abraham Lincoln. I've never met the man. I can say I know about George Washington. I've never met him. I can even say I know about great figures that are alive today, but I have never met them. It's not until you meet someone and develop a relationship with them that you can actually say, I know them. Do you know God's word? Is it alive and well in your heart? Is it, is it in you so that when life squeezes you, the word comes out? Growing up, I used to watch my grandmother. She used to, she used to make the best lemonade. I'm from the sticks, y'all. I'm from, I'm from the sticks. That's the difference between the country and the sticks. I'm from the sticks. I mean, that we had one stop sign in the city I grew up in. I grew up in Creedmoor, North Carolina, barbecue capital of America in North Carolina. Come on, somebody. <laughs> but my grandmother, she used to make the best lemonade. She made her lemonade, God is my witness, in a trash can. And she would have this wooden uh, rake, and she would stir that lemonade. And I would see her start early in the morning rolling lemons from her elbow to her fist. I walk in the kitchen and say, Grandma, what you doing? She said, I'm making lemonade. I said, well, why are you doing that? She said, well, you got to squeeze the lemons to get all the juice out of them. And she would look up at me, and she would always say, the juice is worth the squeeze. But what she was saying is, the only thing that will come out of these lemons is what has been placed in them. And when I squeeze them, the only thing I'm expecting to come out of these lemons is lemon juice. When life squeezes you, what do you expect to come out? Because if you don't put the word of God in you, the only thing that's going to come out of you is that favorite song you got that you've been listening to over and over and over again. They don't got nothing to do with the word of God. It's reminding you of your feelings. It's reminding you of your emotions. And so you find yourself under the pressure of life singing that song that's putting more pressure on you. But when you apply the word of God to your life and life begins to squeeze you, you can remind yourself that God has begun a good work in me. And so God will complete what he started. You can remind yourself the steps of a good man and woman are ordered by God. When life begins to squeeze you, you can remind yourself, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor their seed begging for bread. When life begins to squeeze you, you can say, if I have the faith the size of a mustard seed, I can speak to that mountain and that mountain shell and will be removed. Whenever life begins to squeeze you, you can anticipate and expect whatever you have deposited to come out of you when you need to withdraw. Have you ever gone to the bank, walked up to the teller, and asked the teller for an amount you knew was not in your bank account? <laughs> Just slipped over that deposit, that withdrawal slip, go ahead, get that to me. She say, I'm calling the cops. She say, okay, I'm out of here. <laughs> you would never do that because you know it's not in your account. So often we find ourselves trying to make spiritual withdrawals where we have not yet made spiritual deposits. And all I'm encouraged you to do, family, is spend time in the word of God because the truth of God's word will always set you free. Psalm chapter 16, verse 7 says, even in the darkest of night, your teachings fill my mind. Psalms 119, verse 95, the New Living Translation says, even when wicked people hide to ambush and kill me, I quietly keep my mind on your decrees. When you find yourself in night school, God reminds you of how you can pass every single test because he's already given you the handbook. The second thing that I have to do when I find myself in night school or in the night seasons of life, I, I must free my mind from destructive thoughts. Whenever I have an opportunity to counsel someone or I'm walking someone through therapy or I'm walking with someone through the various battles, whether they be mentally, emotionally, physically, 
and they are tired and they are fatigued, one of the first things I tell them is don't trust yourself. Don't trust yourself. I've never seen a person that was rested, that was filled with hopelessness. And I've never seen a hopeless person that was well rested. When you find yourself fatigued, when you find yourself tired, don't trust yourself. Trust God's word. Are you listening to me? Like Elijah, Elijah went into the wilderness and he began to listen to the voices of everyone else around him. And it wasn't until he stayed still long enough to hear the voice of God that he got the word from God and the word from God was reassurance that God was with him. Whose voice are you listening to? In this life, we have a tendency of listening to one or four voices. The first voice that we listen to is the voice of other people. What should I do? We call our friends before we talk to God. What should I do? How should I, how should I handle this? How should I approach this? And we listen to the opinions of other people. How many of you know the opinions of other people will disappoint you sometimes? The second voice we have a tendency of listening to is our own voice. We listen to our own voice, and based upon how we feel, we'll determine the outcome of the results of what we see. When we feel great, good, we pat ourselves on the back. When we feel bad, we tear ourselves down. So we can't even trust our own voice. The third voice we have a tendency of listening to is the voice of the enemy. When we look in the mirror, we don't like what we see because the voice of the enemy is echoing so loud in our minds that it's become what we think is reality. But anytime the enemy speaks, from this point forward, you have to understand that what he is saying, the exact opposite is going to happen because he cannot tell the truth. The fourth and final voice, the most important voice that we should listen to is the voice of God. When we listen to the voice of God, he leads us into all perfect truth. And he leads us away from all of the other voices that may be contrary to his word and to his voice and reminds us that I am with you and I am for you. And because I am with you and I am for you, nothing or no one can stand against you. And so I have to remind myself that my mind must be free from destructive thoughts. The third and final thing that I want to encourage you with, if you find yourself in night school in this season, is I must focus my mind on the right things. If my mind is focused on the wrong things, my life will wind up at the wrong conclusion. If I focus my mind on the right things, I'll be led by the Spirit of God, I'll follow the voice of God, and I'll walk into the seasons that God desires for me to walk into, even if it's a night school season. The scripture teaches us, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 8, keep your mind on Jesus Christ. Well, Pastor, how can I do that when I got so many other things flying around in my mind and it seems like every time I try to spend time with Jesus, I, my, my mind is flooded with all these other things. And, and I would just say to stay in his presence long enough to just get a word. Turn your phone off. Close the door. Sit down. Be still. Tell your mind to be quiet. And even if you just get one minute of solitude where your mind isn't racing, I guarantee you one minute with God is better than an eternity without him. I have to do my part to prioritize my time with God. Because here's the truth of the matter, we prioritize what we really love. We make time for everything else. We make time for everyone else. We, we even make appointments, y'all. We make appointments to go to the dentist. We make appointments to go to the doctor. We make appointments to go get our hair cut. For the ladies, go get your hair did. You go get your nails done. Go get your feet done. We make appointments. We call ahead of time because we don't want to waste time. Why not make an appointment with God? 
Why, why, why not place on your calendar every single day, this is my time with God. Amen. Scripture teaches us, he or she that dwells in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say to the Lord, He is my refuge, my God, in whom I trust. What I have found about my life is when I find myself in the shadow of God, I trust Him more. When I find myself under the heat of life, my trust for God is a little less than what it should be. What does it mean to be in the shadow of God? It means I'm in proximity of him. Me and my wife, we have a seven-year-old son. His name is Maxwell. And he's at the age where he just wants to do what dad does. He wants to be with me. He wants to mimic me. He wants to talk like I talk. He wants to walk like I walk. And so often in my house, I'll be walking. I'll turn around and he's right there in my shadow. I said, what you doing, man? He said, oh, I'm walking. So why are you following me? I'm not following you. So why are you so close? Well, I just wanted to see what you were doing. So all right, come on, man, let's go. You want to walk with me? Let's walk. He's in my shadow. He just wants to do what he sees his dad doing. He just, he just wants to be like his father. So he finds himself in my shadow. And when you're in love with your father, you just want to be with your dad and find yourself under the shadow of the Almighty. When you find yourself under the shadow of the Almighty, you can say to the Lord, you are my strength, my God, in whom I'll trust. I'll trust you in day school. I'll trust you in night school. I'll trust you in mountaintop seasons. I'll trust you in valley seasons. I'll trust you because I am under the shadow of the Almighty. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 3. The NCV version it says, think about Jesus' example. He held on while wicked people were doing evil things to him. So do not get tired and stop trying. You may be in a season of fatigue right now. You may be tired. You, you may be at the end of your rope. But I'm telling you, when you come to the end of your natural, that's where the supernatural power of God steps in. You may be in night school right now. You may be in pain. You, you may be confused by life circumstances and happenings and the things that are going on in your life that you did not plan and anticipate and expect to be happening in this season of your life. But I'm so glad that God does not live up to my expectations. But he always lives up to his word. And his word is true. It never fails. So stay faithful over the few things. And have your mind made up that no crisis in your life is going to go to waste. This crisis that you find yourself in is going to push you closer to Christ. The pain that you may find yourself in is going to push you closer to purpose. I've made my mind up that no pain is going to leave my life until it pushes me closer to God's purpose. You may find yourself there right now. And I just want to encourage you that every single storm eventually runs out of rain. And just like the waves on the beaches that we love so dearly, they will recede over time. Morning is coming. I'll say it again, morning is coming. So learn what you need to learn from the night school that you may be in right now. I want you to bow your heads, close your eyes. No matter what location you're at, whether you're watching online right now, 
you're in this room, you find yourself in night school and you can acknowledge that you don't have the answers that you thought that you did. You need help. You need someone to walk with you. You, you need a tutor to help you navigate the various things that you find yourself in in this season. If that's you, I want you to stretch both hands towards heaven right now. I just want to set myself in agreement with you. If you can hear my voice, no matter what location you're at, I want you to know that God's got you. I want to remind you that he is faithful even when we find ourselves faithless. I want to remind you that he is so consistent when we find the inconsistencies in our lives. And I truly believe that when our seasons don't change, it's because God is changing us in the seasons. And so right now, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you would infuse us with hope. That your spirit, God, would dwell with us and go with us and remind us that we are not alone, even if we find ourselves in night seasons. God, whatever you desire for us to learn, whatever you desire to teach us in night school, allow us to see it on the first go-round. May we learn more in this season than we've ever learned before. We are solely and totally dependent upon you. So God, I ask that you would heal those that need to be healed. Deliver those that need to be delivered. Set free those that need to be set free, God. And allow us to step into a season of joy. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.